day, ladies and gentlemen, good day, colleagues. Thanks a lot for Dr. Yahya for the kind invitation and possibility to present my lecture, my little presentation about the Ubuntu asphyxia and new methods of the treatment. Because all we know that severe asphyxia has absolutely different impact on their neurological outcome. Therefore, this is not a lecture about their presentation, sorry, about their treatment. This is a presentation about their science because I present my data that I founded in the Department of Pediatric Research in Oslo University under supervision of very, very famous person, Professor Ula Saugst. Unfortunately, um, sad sadly, he didn't come. Okay, uh, did not have any conflict of interest and tried to understand what in different opinions, opinions of their persons of the science, what does it mean versus asphyxia, perinatal asphyxia. American Academy of American Academy of Pediatrics, American College of Obstetrician and Gynecologists recommended that the term of perinatal asphyxia be, be reserved for newborn infants with a low FD score. It's clear, but it comes only in 1992, not earlier. But the question of the cerebral palsy, some neurological disability, the people knew from a long, long time. Nevertheless, other recommendations, a little bit more epidemiological data, will give us the World Health Organization. Due to definition of this organization, birth asphyxia is failure to establish breathing at birth. Accounts about many, many, many deaths. But I would like to pay your attention not only what we do, because we discussed it many times in the first day on the workshop when we discussed about their NRP. I would like to follow for the, um, sorry, for the last question. Whose work includes, excuse me, uh, monitoring and data, guidelines, quality of care, and research? Very good question. It's very difficult to research severe asphyxia of newborn. It doesn't matter in what country we live because we have a lot of restrictions. But we can try to understand what we have just now. Due to my personal search in different sources, PubMed gave us information that newborn asphyxia treatment and different type of medications, we can choose for more than 1,000th time. Cochlear Library give us only eight reviews, asphyxia and resuscitation. I could not come to their, could not jump to their PubMed because we tr try, we spent a lot of time, it's really. But Cochrane Library will be much, much helpful. Anyway, what we know and what we have. We have full body or craniocerebral hypothermia for newborns with HIE. This is our standard. And we know about different methods, medication and gases, different type of trials and different types of lab studies. But nevertheless, we will jump once more to their Cochrane library. It's a very famous result that we have evidence in more than 10 randomized controlled trials include in these systematic reviews. And of course, we have a good proof that hypothermia will be helpful for newborns with severe asphyxia. Yes, it works. We can go. What we know about many type of experimental therapy we know that we have antioxidants. We can use anti-inflammation and antipoptotic medications 
we can use trophic support and we had tried to use regeneration. And all of these methods, all of these medications and gadgets, information about them you can take from the PubMed and other sources. Nevertheless, what we really used just now, Cochrane Library told to us that unfortunately we don't have any conclusion about erythropoietin. We don't have any conclusion about melatonin because they have only the protocol. Protocol and no any other words more. Some words about their stem cell-based therapy, but unfortunately no evidence. What we try to do, we try to jump one more slide and try to understand what we have, what kind of physiologi physiological, but a physiological reaction we will see in the hypoxia. First of all, we will see that oxygenesis of perinatal hypoxic ischemia brain damage is complex. It's very important, complex. It's not only the failure or injury of the brain. This is a complex of different reaction. And we try to use medication or equipment or tool that can be prevent this injury. This is very, very important. One more about what we have and what we would like to have. We have hypothermia only, but it works in 100%, I think no. Sometimes works very well with very well neurological outcome, sometimes no. Therefore, we try to explain what kind of medications, what kind of drugs can we use for their severe asphyxia. Why my interest was noble gases, xenon and hydrogen. Because during the maybe the last 50 years, these two gases is actively researched on the basis of the neuro protection. The first studies about hydrogen was from 70s of the last century and it was about their tumor, tumor of the liver. Afterwards, it's a cascade of different neuroprotective strategies, but unfortunately, animal strategies or cell strategies were used with xenon and hydrogen. I tried to compare in very simple basis, color, heavy, non-heavy, or the less, one very, very important thing. We must know that hydrogen, very cheaper ex versus xenon. Xenon is really very, very expensive gas, and we can't use it for many, many times, but some anesthesiologists used it in operation room. One more science, one more physiology, pathophysiology about their noble gases about xenon. What, how it works. It perform neuroprotective function by bonding of their NMDA because the glutamate, glutamate is the main neurotransmitter of the central nervous system. You must know and please follow for this Yes. Hydrogen has a lot of effects. Anti-inflammation. One, antioxidative. Two, anti-apoptotic. Three, and cetera, 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 cetera. Why we can't use it? It's very easy. It's cheaper. It has a lot of effects that we can use for severe asphyxia. Try to understand. Uh, maybe not very nice slide, I'm sorry. This is a brief database, what was done with the xenon. And if you look attentively, only a couple of, just wait, uh, yeah. 
couple of, oops, is it, I'm sorry, couple of uh, data from their nental hypoxic ischemia. This data from the cell and mice study. Okay. Some time ago, it was very nice research in the United Kingdom, and one pilot study, maybe not pilot, maybe control study, was done in the different hospital in the Great Britain. But what was the effect? What was the result? Result was that the administration of Xenium within the late time frame used in this trial is feasible and apparently safe, but is unlikely to enhance the neuroprotective effect of cooling after birth asphyxia. In the other words, yes, it has a lot of effects that we need, but unfortunately it doesn't work. It doesn't work similar slide with their analysis. And if you will see, only few studies about neonates in mice and in pigs. In my institution, in Oslo, in Department of Pediatric Research, we perform a model of their newborn pig and try to understand, does it hard hygiene will have anti-apoptotic effect? This is very important because uh, we presumed that if the gas is cheaper, if the gas can be used in delivery room, why we can't try and perform this study and to analyze. This is only the hypothesis. This is only not, not what we can do in realistic. We take, we took, sorry, we took huge number of their animals and divided all animals in four intervention groups. First of all, the standard care room air. The second group is heart aging group. And of course we know that that hydrogen plus hypothermia we hypothesized will be have much, I'm sorry, more interesting effect. More, uh, we have a more strange, therefore, we combine room air plus hypothermia, and their fourth group, hydrogen plus hypothermia. Try to find superiority. What we will find with a known and unknown type of medications, type of their treatment. And of course, we have a very small six animals in the control group. This is our experimental protocol. If you will see that all newborn pigs were delivered in a medical institution early morning from the local farm. They were weighted, anesthetized. We make intubation. We inserted the intravenous catheters. We inserted intraarterial catheters, especially to measure blood pressure and to, to take their blood samples. It was a big, big work. Nevertheless, due to our experiment, we try to mimic, um, I'm sorry, mimic asphyxia with our carbon dioxide. And afterwards, we follow for their reaction. We try to reach two points or blood pressure will be less of 20 millimeters of mer mercurium or base excess will be the same or less minus 20. Immediately when we reached this goal, we stopped the severe asphyxia 
and started to treat, to treat due to our design of the study with room air or with hot hygiene for 30 minutes. And what kind of results we have? We, after nine hours of observation, we terminated all pigs from all groups, snap frozen all tissues, brain, eye, liver, and many, many others. And afterwards, we try to research. The research is ongoing. Maybe we will have more interesting results during the times, but now I can share with you only what we have by now. We try to research case-based expression in prefrontal cortex, in these groups. If you will see that, yes, the model is still working, because in the control group expression of case space is lower than in the group of investigation. And we see that there for room air plus nomatome air plus uh, compare with our hydrogen plus nomatome, we will see the difference. Try to go more in the statistics because we need statistic for statistical difference, not only for the words. In our conclusion, in our results, sorry, the space three expression was significantly lower in both group receiving hydrogen compared with their room air with a standard care group. There was not significant towards reduced of the space three activation in hydrogen plus hypothermia compared with room air plus hyperthermia group. The analysis of case-based three positive cells did not show significant difference between group receiving hydrogen followed by nomothermia and hyperthermia. In the other words, we suppose, it's only theory, that our data indicate that resuscitation with hydrogen gas may, may not have, but may have, an antipoptopic effect on the cortex after severe asphyxia. Whole body hypothermia could enhance the influence of hydrogen gas. Uh, of course, we need more data from the research. Of course, we have need more data from the tissue because we try to re research not only their brain, but liver, lung, and urine in different laboratories. It will be take a time, but nevertheless, this is uh, our first, maybe not very prompt, but interesting result. What kind of advantages and disadvantages we have in the lab studies? The first of all, we try to mimic pathophysiology of the disease. Research different types of pathological reaction in different cells, tissues, and others and must predict and translate in the clinical medicine, in the practice. This is our main goal. Try to do something interesting, to find something interesting in the uh, lab study, and try to use it in the practice, in everyday practice. But what is the main advantage? Oh, disadvantage, sorry. Not all experimental models work similar. We can't compare, for example, monkey and pig. We cannot exclude mistake in the hypothesis and the design of the study. It's time consuming and of course it's expensive. It's very expensive. This is uh, my comments, my personal comments to the end of this presentation that we can't use experimental unproved methods, unproved data in the delivery room and dental ward. We must be accurate in interpretation of all experimental data. In the other words, to have a crisis. But we need to have the new method, new treatment, new medication to prevent severe asphyxia. And must think not only to treat, because this is not only 
our task, but to think about their follow-up uh, high quality of the life. In the other words, we don't have the magic bullet for the high, uh, hypoxic ischemic injury, but we try to reach their goal, and science will help us. Thanks a lot for your attention.